What's going on guys, Etzer here, and welcome back to another episode of Geometry Dash Bootlegs. In this episode, I am only going to be focusing on one game by the name of Dashy Square. This is going to be an episode solely focusing on this one game, just because it's a little bit larger than other games I've covered in the past, so let's just get into it. The game actually had a recent update to fix things for this review, so thanks to the developer for adding that in. Yeah, like Geometry Dash, it's made by an indie developer uh, by the name of Cass Sanity. And before I go criticizing the game, I just want to congratulate Cass for the app and its success, as well as let you guys know that indie game developing is a ton of work. In order to develop a game just by yourself, you need to be an artist, a programmer, and a businessman, as well as a lot more. It's actually pretty rare to find a single person who can do all of these perfectly. So I'm going to knock at his game a good amount, but that doesn't mean it's not impressive. While I will start by going over the negatives, there are still a lot of positives which I will also put throughout the video. But anyways. To be honest, I wouldn't really classify Dashy Square as a bootleg, but rather as an off-brand. You know how you go to a store and there are rows of cereal, and on the main shelves that everybody looks at there's Captain Crunch, Frost and Flakes and Cocoa Puffs, all of the name brands by Kellogg's and Post and big companies we know today? But then you look down a shelf or two only to find Colossal Crunch, Sweet Flakes and Cocoa Roos. In general, these cereals try to emulate the name brand or the original game. They taste a lot like the originals, but they only end up looking worse because of their box art or unfamiliarity with the brand. Dashy Square is a lot like this. It serves a lot as an alternative to Geometry Dash. The cereal analogy also brings up the two major problems with Dashy Square. One, it tries way too hard to mimic Geometry Dash. And two, the overall design is bizarre, sometimes cluttered, and very sloppy. Dashy Square's main problem is it attempts to emulate Geometry Dash. Dash, in the name, is an obvious sign of emulation for one, but also the developer cast tries to compare his game quite often to Geometry Dash, tweeting things like, I know people are hyped for Geometry Dash 2.1, but I think Dashy Square level editor will be equally as epic. As well as, Geometry Dash 2.1 and Dashy Square level editor coming out soon. Such a great time to be alive. Most of the game modes are similar as well, besides one of the first game modes you see, where you hold your cube in place until objects clear a path. I initially thought this would be an issue, because you could simply hold forever to throw off the sync in the music, but he programmed it well, so that's not an issue. Still, I think the game mode is pretty boring and unnecessary, because it made the level I was playing feel slow and less exciting whenever I reached a point with that game mode. Another very reminiscent feature of Dash Square is the music. It tries very hard to emulate Geometry Dash fans and their taste in music, using songs like Stereo Madness 2 for the first level, but then also featuring songs from F77, The Fat Rat, Extruler, Envy, and Dex Arson. Along with this, there are many other things that the developer has added to associate Dashy Square with Geometry Dash. There is a pretty large Dashy Square update coming soon that adds a smaller version of Geometry Dash's level editor to the game, as well as plenty more icons and some new customization features. A lot of the things in the upcoming Dashy Square update are actually the stuff most GD players complain about. The game already has customization of all spikes, speed changes, and more, but in addition, Dashy Square is adding custom practice music and more, which I can kind of appreciate. The game itself feels a lot like the game made for Geometry Dash fans by Geometry Dash fan, which shows. It has a lot of things that Geometry Dash fans hope for, custom music for menus and practice, a texture pack system, and even a live multiplayer feature. Dashy Square, while I will admit is not even close to perfect, still does try to improve on the Geometry Dash concept and makes new game modes and features. The controls are mostly the same, even if it's far more floaty, and although it ends up including less game modes than Geometry Dash, it still adds some new ideas to the app. Pixel art is one of those things that is so damn difficult to get right. Especially in a moving game where you have to have things in the foreground pop while the background is visible, so it doesn't distract from what's in front of it. Another mobile app that I think uses pixel art perfectly is Downwell. Despite the character being only a few pixels tall, his motions are visible and clear, the obstacles shown brightly behind the background, and overall a beautiful game to play. Downwell's pixel art enhances the game rather than deteriorating it. Meanwhile, in Dashy Square I feel the pixel art is used as a cop-out from using HD or more modern graphics. When I was about 12, I tried my hand at app developing and made a pretty broken and terrible game called the Dodger. It was essentially a bullet hell and was actually quite fun to play, but in the end looked pretty terrible using mostly pixel graphics. To be honest, the reason I did this was because iPhone apps require lots of graphics. Looking at the game sheets for Geometry Dash, there are so many icons, HUD panels, buttons, and more to create. Pixel art simplifies this because you only need to work within the threshold of a few pixels, which speeds up the art process significantly and allows you to focus more on gameplay features and finish your game in quicker time. But this ends up making my app, the Dodger, along with Dashy Square, look far worse than they could have looked. Granted, Dashy Square's graphics are far better than my old ass game, but the game still doesn't look as good as it can. Dashy Square's graphics can definitely be improved. To exemplify this, I set a clock for one hour and set out to make a portion of a Dashy Square level just in After Effects, building all the graphics and having them move similar to the actual game. I had managed to do it in just under 54 minutes. Well, this was really just one icon of about 100 in the full Dashy Square, and it didn't involve any really programming. 
I still just thought it was a good example of how you can use all the graphics and make them in a very short time and how quickly you can easily make it a little bit better. One of the things I think is so rare about Geometry Dash is how clean it is, how perfect the graphics are. To be honest, I think it's a feature most people take for granted when they complain how a new Geometry Dash icon doesn't look good. Dashy Square lacks that extra level of skill or finesse that Geometry Dash has in its icons. In addition, I think the fonts are way too random and scattered. On the menu screen, I think I counted three or four different fonts that don't pair extremely well with each other. On the menu screen, I think I counted three or four different fonts that don't pair extremely well with each other. Additionally, none of these three fonts pair well with pixel art, the main graphic theme in this game, so you end up with this weird mess that I think you could fix with just a simple font change and some calming of the colors in the background. In the end, Dashy Square serves as an off-brand for Geometry Dash. Its light version has enough features that I was able to enjoy myself for the price of zero dollars, and despite all of its flaws, it's still an alright game that deserves a fairly good spot on my bootleg list. While all of its features outrank that of Dub Dash, I can't really put it above it right now because I still think there's a lot to be refined in the game. I could easily see this game beating out Dub Dash once it has a new update with the level editor, as well as maintaining a top spot on the bootleg list with a graphics buff. If you watch my channel but don't own the full version of Geometry Dash yet, then I suppose Dashy's Square Light is a pretty good alternative. I'll put a link in the description if you want to try it out and see what you think of it and your own opinions. I'd love to hear them in the comments below as well. Also, for any of you guys wondering, my old game, The Dodger, isn't on the App Store anymore, so don't go try to get it. It's pretty terrible. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Geometry Dash bootlegs episode. This is a pretty rare case. In the future, I will probably go back to reviewing lots at a time, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. If you want to see anything reviewed in specific, just hit me up or leave something in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But that's it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Etzer content in 2017.